we're gonna look into making just the arches here, not the whole tower with the windows. I mean, we could, we, I could go to the point that you know, construct the windows. Sometimes those um, those things will be broken into like many pieces. So I see this part and I see a seam here. So I would probably make that uh, lower part first, and then do the other part um, uh, as a, sec a secondary, um, and then in the inner tower as well. So I'm going to look into this and how we can start with a poly shape to make an arch like that. Um, I'm going to go back to Maya, and uh, I'm going to use any ideas like uh, of what you would use. Uh, cylinder is like uh, the first thing that comes in mind, but then. Um, we could actually go ahead and uh, go to the side view since we want to make this. We can use the pipe tool. So I use the pipe tool anytime I want to do an arch with a thickness. So I can start like, you know, working on this. Um, so height, radius, and thickness. So you have like, we have that. So I'm going to do thickness of one. Uh, the height, we don't really care because I'm going to delete the height. So and so here's something to get started with. Now the Maya 2016 has the uh, um, same tools, it's just the icons have changed. Uh, here's the wireframe on shaded. Always turn this on so you can see the wireframe. Always work with the legacy default viewport, not with viewport 2.0 because the viewport 2.0 will slow down your processor. Just when you model, switch to that. Here's the the pipe tool and um, <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is like whenever I want to start shaping arches or windows or like anything like a, a chair or and that has like a profile, uh, I don't care about the thickness. So basically right now I need to like get rid of the thickness. So let me just uh, let's go here, turn on the wireframe on shaded, go to legacy viewport and give it more, th give it more uh, height so I can actually get rid of this. So I'm going to select all these faces and delete them. And then I'm, I end up having this. But then this wasn't enough in terms of uh, resolution. Maybe, maybe I would need more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a step. And this doesn't look, I mean, I could actually increase the resolution. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give it like, let's say 40. So it's much more resolution. Um, now I'm gonna get rid of the height as I did before. So before you get rid of the height or you get rid of faces, just make sure that the resolution is, you know, suitable. Um, if I go to the side view, I'm gonna get rid of half of that. So I end up with this piece. This is a decent, you know, high res, uh, half arch. You know, like I mean, semicircular kind of object. Now, what I need to do is continue it, so continue so I can get those, um, you know, uh, other pieces, you know, columns. So edge, one edge. So we grab the edges and we extrude. So extrusion is now they have the extrusion as ev as like a general tool. So extrude. And this switch is to switch. If I start pulling this down this happens we don't want that this is a global switch so that's global so that will you know go and add but this one here if you go back that's the local so that's like that's why it's confused because you know there's like different uh, angles here so I'm gonna just get that all the way down I'm just gonna eyeball it something like that but then I need some divisions so I can actually since this window is open I can add more divisions here, like something like that. So I want, generally what you want is to get squares for, for this one, for this particular one, because we're going to twist it, and we need the resolution for that. So everything needs to be squares, and usually general rule, quads, of course, four-sided polygons, plus we don't want any stretched polygons. We don't want to see like, we want to see more square polygons, and then I'll, we're going to go around the process many times so we can kind of like understand how that works. So I have 20 divisions here, object mode, that's, um, okay, I'm done with this piece. Now, I want to bring it up, select it, W, here's the pivot point. Now, the pivot point, I don't know if you guys remember the snapping tools. Uh, if I hold on the D, I'm moving, sorry, let me just 
Let's do it one more time. So I hold down the D. So I can actually, you know, move the pivot point around. So you have to be careful with rotating the. You don't want to rotate the pivot point. So this is the pivot point, and uh, what you can do is like hold down the while I'm while you're holding down the D, hold the V, and with the middle mouse button you go and snap it anywhere you want, in any point. So V is snap to point. So then let go, and you can actually snap to grid. So I can bring move it up here. So now it's like super um, uh, clean on on the floor here and I can I can start working on it <clears throat> so that's the first thing I do uh, I can see that this this is just like the the opening but then I don't need that other offset line I, I want to straighten them up so a lot of these points need to be straightened uh, so I'm gonna make one prototype and I'll tile it around and then I'm gonna bend the whole thing all together in 180 degrees and now we'll have like an, an amazing symmetrical tower so I'm gonna go to my uh, uh, front, uh, side view, right view. I'm gonna get rid of the grid for a second, and then I'm gonna collect a bunch of points up here. So all these vertices, I'll use the lasso tool, and I'm gonna start grabbing all these. Uh, make sure it's all, uh, you know, all of them are. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't need. Uh, let's say you uh, you you deselected something. If you if you press Shift and you are trying to select, no, notice that you're selecting this one, but then it's deselecting the other one. So if you want to include and always overwrite the selection, Control Shift will overwrite your selection. So you just any anything you do, it's going to select. So that's a good thing. Control will deselect. So I'm going to deselect that part and this part here. <coughs> and I'm going to press. Um, w to move this up and R to scale so I'm gonna just flatten these out so I'm gonna do that a couple of times until everything is you know and I'm also gonna just uh, you know just push them outwards notice that it, now that's not straight over here so this is not exactly straight so what I'm gonna do is select this press W move it and press V and snap it to here and do the same for that guy this and snap it to here so now everything is getting, getting straight not to here to here and this so one v, v, snaps it. v holding on the V snap to here snap to the point that you want as a reference point okay so now uh, we want a better looking mesh so we want to select all these and just scale them so they're they're straight sort of straight it doesn't have to be perfect and this is not doesn't look really nice actually so what we're gonna do is get rid of these so I'm gonna delete the, those this is called retopologizing so we're we wanna we're starting to change the topology of the mesh so we can clean it up uh, these here we can select symmetrically those two and then move them down so they're like kind of cleaner <coughs> notice because I deleted those uh, edges and I have vertices here this is like a one, two, three, four, five, six sided uh, polygon. We don't want that. So now it's a good time to use the toolbox. The toolbox is this new that 2015 has the same toolbox. So I'm going to use the multi cut tool. The multi cut tool is it's like the, the split tool that they had before. Now it's called multi cut. And it says there's a st snapping step, which is usually 10. And then there's also subdivisions. But let's leave it here. And then here's the tool. So what you do is like you go and you click on the button, you click on the, uh, on, on the, um, with the left button here. So let's say you want to connect this to this. So you click here and then you click on the edge and then you create, and you press enter, you create like the edge. Do it here too. Enter. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to connect this to that. So that now I'm like actually retopologizing and, and eliminating any end gons. So now everything is cleaner. Now these are not on the same height. And we'll see what we can do about that in a minute. Basically at this point we, we actually don't need half of this piece. 
I'm gonna get rid of it because if I have half of it, then I can just you know work on this and then uh, we can mirror it. So I don't have to do twice the work. So I'm gonna select this and these uh, guys and uh, just move them down so I can I can actually straighten them out a little bit. And now I have this bad kind of poly I mean it's it's a, it's a it's normal I mean to have that over here but we need to kind of figure out a way to to split these two because these are stretched polys whereas these guys here are square so they're they're like it's a better kind of better so, um, so I'm just gonna use the insert edge loop tool and I can start you know adding a couple of subdivisions and these are two wide so we're gonna do another one over here that would be fine I, you could potentially you know like uh, fix the edge flow a little bit you know I like to fix the edge flow so it's kind of like more so um, it doesn't look that it, it looks a little bit nice so you you want to always kind of fix that you want to fix that so it looks continuous and also so that takes a little time And we could st we could still add more here. I mean, you can so a little bit like that would make it a little you know would would uh, uh, you know make it much better. Uh, you can take some time here to fix that. I'm not moving anything on the edges here on the, on the on the on the borders. So this is this looks good. So I have like half of my prototype done. So now um, let's press W. Now we need to mirror that geometry. Uh, that's the next step. So we go to mesh, mirror, geometry. And right now I'm looking at the gizmo down here. And this is the Z, always blue. And it points out to the left. And that means when it, wherever this points towards, that's the, that's the positive for the mirroring tool. Uh, if you want to do the opposite, you have to do the opposite of what the arrow says. So if this is Z, then I want to do minus Z so I can mirror that and I also want to merge with the original and merge vertices and hit apply and that will do it. Uh, if I, I need to do a test quickly and see if these are connected so I'm going to press 3 this is good and also I'm going to go ahead and select one of these vertices just click click it and move it so just to see that it's binded together so it's fine so I'm done with that now things are getting easier because I'm just gonna select that and duplicate it and make six pieces because we want a hexagonal kind of like circular tower so I'm gonna press one so we're on the hard surface not on the not not on soft so it's hard surface and I'm gonna press D to move the pivot point okay so I just want to make sure that it's Okay, so it's there. Um, so Shift D, Shift D, move it and snap it here. And now Shift D again. So we have. It says here six selected pieces. So I'm gonna select this first one and keep it. Always keep the prototype. Don't separate because you might go have to go back and redo work. So keep the prototype and then grab these guys and, and combine them. So I'm going to combine these. And combination that makes a singular mesh, but that doesn't mean that these vertices here are still not connected. So now because everything is kind of looks fine, I'm just going to select the whole thing and press merge. So it will merge all the vertices that are not merged. So it will try with a small threshold to merge everything. Uh, so you can just go ahead and look at if do a test just only one vertex is fine if it's connected then everything is good also another test that you can do is press 3 and if you don't see any splitting then it's fine we're fine so now this is what we have and we can now bend the whole structure uh, and make it like a closed circle so what we need to do is go to our deformation tools and say nonlinear bend. So then we get this um, line, which is confusing, of course. Uh, um, 
because it's uh, it's the bending tool but you have to start working with it by pressing T for manipulation the T is like the shortcut for for show the manipulator tool so here's the, sh the manipulator tool but that doesn't we don't want to do that type of bending even though it looks kinda cool but so we're gonna just like rotate the whole bending modifier like like that so that looks also cool and then we want to say 90 degrees this this happens because I made sure that my prototype had like all squared out poly so we have enough information enough resolution to get all these nice def deformations if we didn't have that much information it would be like kind of broken apart but now it's all smooth so this is what we want to do but uh, notice that it's inside out so I'm looking at the bad surface out here and the good surface inside there so I want to select the bend tool open the bend curvature and I'm gonna do instead of one I would I could do 180 and close it or I can say no do minus 180 so it will do the other side so I'm here with this piece almost almost done and at this particular moment I'm going to delete the history because if I see that it, it works I'm gonna delete the history gets rid of the the, the modifier uh, centering the pivot so now we're clean and we need to just before we extrude we need to make sure that at the point that they met there's still uh, vertices that are double so we need to make sure that this mesh is also uh, merged so merge so now this is all probably let's press 3 so that's all done so it was quite of a process to just do that that piece and now we need to just extrude that and pull on the Z and let's add a, uh, one division in, in between so we do 1.5 <clears throat> okay so now <clears throat> um, I'll just raise I'll extrude these faces up so I'm gonna go to my right view selected faces notice that I have like the dots because when I like good luck selecting faces here but if you have the dots you can just do that like just only the and only the top dots it looks like nothing is selected but if you go on the perspective you select which is extremely convenient so if I uh, I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this piece all the way up like that because I'm gonna do the windows separate with another you know volume and I'm gonna add some divisions and I could add more this is like a very high-res model I'm I will prepare it for a print too so that's why I'm doing so much but that's how much you would add anyways if you wanted to do the bend you would have to have some information there. so now um, I will I would like to um, go and do some like um, intricate detailing first of all this is not even smoothed we don't need to do a smooth the the whole thing worked out as, as is so I'm gonna select uh, I'm gonna turn off the wireframe on shaded for a second and, and there's some seam that I noticed here over here so those can be smoothed out like after yeah those seams are because they're just meeting there and they're like kinda stretching right now but we'll, we'll see how we can smooth them out in a little bit so for now um, I'm just gonna go in and add some bevels so add bevels here let's see okay. so we have to double click on these So basically, you have to do a little bit of work now. You have to kind of go ahead and, and do that. Um, so if I would bevel this piece, and so and say um, edit mesh bevel, so I would go to the bevel command and reset the settings. In this case, I will I will use the absolute bevel because it's going to be the same for any size so uh, if I do a 0 0.02 
that might work. So that's that looks good. I just need a little bit of, of beveling. You know. um, a lot of these, uh, uh, what we could do here is like um, we can treat it like uh, instead of like smoothing it out. I mean, we could smooth it out right now, and you can see that we're not getting any of those areas of of. Uh, but you know we we have to sharpen a lot of the geometry basically, so I'm gonna just keep it like that for a second. Um, also, you cannot. I'm not gonna put all the detail. I'm just showing you only one area, like this area here that has like a little bit of a highlight with with the beveling, and I'm gonna go up here and uh, select the mesh and go uh, and use an offset loop tool. The offset edge loop tool is like something really interesting. You just you can do like you want to do that. So you want to go and select one of the loops, and you can actually do like something like that, like a little area here, and then you can select this this piece, and you can just do a little bit of a scale something like that so that will give it like a slight you know um, yeah those are good kind of ways to and if it's if it's not enough you can do a little bit more just scale the whole thing in and also you can select the edges around it all these two edges and you can bevel those slightly so you can actually make a little bit of a dip there so you can go and cre uh, create like a, a bevel. So now if I go, if I move back, so you can see that I made this kind of small area. So I'm going to stop here because that's like already enough. And also these, um, these areas here, I mean, a lot of them, a lot of these edges could be smoothed with, uh, then, uh, you know, you can actually set a normal angle or smooth. Uh, soften the edge. So, see, uh, that's the video game, people. Now, there's nothing there. So, if you see some like edges that are like not, go soften the edge. Just that edge. Soften the edge. So, now we're good. I'm not going to do all the beveling. I'm going to stop here. And this is part of the tower done. And, um,. One thing I want to show you is like I'm gonna duplicate that guy. Uh, why did that happen? One second. Okay. This is a weird thing. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the history and duplicate that. And <clears throat> I'm just gonna show you another de deformation, and then I'm gonna turn off the video. So this is. The twist deformer, nonlinear twist. So I can actually make a crazy looking thing from this tower, like I can just start, you know, twisting these things. Like until it looks that it can take it, like structurally. So you have another one here. You can make like a, a bunch of You can actually select that and add yeah. it here. So now if you wanna let's say you wanna bring it exactly in the middle, how do we do that? Select it and shift select the last one and go to say uh, snap align objects, <coughs> align objects. Middle, X, Y, Z, last selected, and it goes right there. So then you can select it and then move it up. If you want to do it very accurately, just press D, V, and it's like that, and then press V up here, and it's going to sit exactly there. So you can do a bunch of interesting looking stuff right so that's like a very high resolution model that can be thrown in a 3d printer and you can see it like that like you know print it with any sort of detail
but we needed that detail because we're actually twisting and bending stuff so like that we needed that detail um, and that's enough now if you wanted to get rid of some detail let's say you know what all these edges here are obsolete I'm not gonna use any of these you can actually those edges are not gonna hurt if you delete them but always delete them pressing control delete not just delete so that's all this area could be you know just empty um, but I'm not I'm just gonna leave it because uh, I might actually print this on uh, and, and the printer needs all that detail because I'm gonna stop the video here and then you guys can ask me any questions